G'day legends, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. Now if you are in the Roo Crew, you are watching this early access video on Tuesday afternoon answering all of your questions from the Roo Crew. If you're watching this on YouTube, that likely means it's around about Thursday afternoon. So we're recording this before team lists and all this sort of stuff, before you get all that news. But if you would like to join the Roo Crew, make sure you go and hit the link in the description. Join the Roo Crew, $8 a month, $2 a week, cheap as chips. There is literally too much content in there for you to deal with. It is all fantastic. Probably the one downside is you have to deal with a little bit more of Cat than the average bear. Speaking of, welcome in, Cat. Pleasure oh, as always. Lucky them. You know how many people just signed up for the Roo Crew when you said that. <laughs> You're pretty popular in the Roo Crew just quietly. They're a nice bunch of fans of yours that I think are becoming a real, you know, Cat community, which is really nice. We've, uh, we've taken on the Phil Gould approach of uh, the no dickhead policy oh, yeah. in the Roo Crew. Uh, so I'm hanging on by a thread at the moment. <laughs> uh, but really enjoying it and we have got a heap of questions. Now, guys, with all these questions, we did it last week and we had about 27 questions uh, and that took us about an hour or so. Uh, the questions we got today, that there ended up being close to 50 of them. So mm-hmm. what I've done is I've actually gone through and answered some of the more simpler ones that I could answer just via uh, work text or whatever. Uh, um, I've gone and just replied to those comments. So if you don't hear your questions, only because I've replied there, every other question we are going to go through. And uh, obviously as the Roo Crew grows, uh, there is obviously going to be more and more and more questions in there. So we'll have to just navigate that as we go. I think, Kat, in the future we'll have mm. to go through and just maybe take out similar sort of questions. Um, and I think as well from like a super coach point of view, a lot of super coach questions in there, you can probably put them into the beers and break even Q&A and whatnot. But we can work that out as we go. We're going to go through a stack of questions today. Where do you want to kick off, Katmandu? Well, speaking of super coach, we're going to go right to the start of the Ask Me Anything and uh, and do it in order because I think that is the best way to do it. Could the Ask Me Anything be a could be anything? <gasps> Absolutely. I have I think, to be. No, I think Ask Me Anything, the answer could be could anything. Could be anything. Okay. Like that. Let's nice. do it. All right. Question number one is from Don's. He said, thoughts on Lukey up to Hosking to get a pay rise or Lukey down to Curran for sustainable points flow? Which one would you do? Now, there are a lot of questions on Lukey to Hosking or to Curran. I'll tell you what, guys, and pending team list Tuesday, you guys will know soon, if Finne Fuiaki gets named in the second row, at, I think he's 238K or something like that. I'll have to double check his price. But, mate, if he's available in the 2RF, I would probably go with him. I said... Curran on the Roo Crew the other day. That was before the Helam Luku injury. Uh, if you manage to get your paws on Finne Fuiaki at that price, hopefully playing 80 minutes, even if he plays 60, I think he'll be worthwhile. So he's the guy I'd be leaning towards at the moment, Finne Fuiaki. That's obviously pending team list. He's 292K he is. Uh, it's a good value there. He played 50-odd minutes on the weekend, scored 38. I think he can make us good money. The other side of it, it's either Hosking or it is Curran. Now, Hosking, he's obviously doing better at the moment. He's getting a lot of attacking opportunities. He's going to make a lot of money. But Elliot Whitehead returns soon. So if you are going to make that Hosking move, you're grabbing a bit of cash now and you're hoping that he keeps that spot. He might not, though. I think Curran will be a more consistent guy. So Curran's a bit safer. If you want to live life on the edge, take a little gamble on the great Timmy Williams, Zach Hosking. Uh, but I would be going with Fine Fuiaki, ideally. And then I'm probably leaning towards Curran personally. Uh, but I'm really, really keen to see what Timmy says about that on beers and break evens. Uh, being a Canberra Raiders guy with, with a bit of inside knowledge there, uh, Timmy will probably be able to g- point us in the right direction as far as Zach Hosky. Awesome. So from JN, we have do you have any favorite tries or NRL moments that you think are underrated? Favourite tries. I'll tell you what, I've said it before. My favourite try was probably scored by Cliffy Lyons in 1990, game two of the Kangaroo Tour. I've spoken about that quite a bit. goes through a thousand set of hands. Then it's kicked back infield off the boot of Andrew Eddinghausen and um, Cliffy catches it and scores there. It's probably my favourite try of all time. Tell you what, um, Xavier Coates had a good crack <laughs> at it on the weekend. Um, don't think that's underrated, that's for sure. No, I don't think that's underrated at all. Um, there's been – I'm trying to think of other tries that really stand out to me over the years. I've been lucky enough to have been a, a lot of fantastic tries live. I was there when Freddie did the charge down in 04 in State of Origin. I was there for the Benji flick. I was there for Kyle Felt's try, wow. obviously. Um, I've been very lucky. I was there for, you know, Kyle Felt also 
So Michael Morgan's big play in the lead up to that. Um, I think as well the Brett Mullins try, I think it was 1994, where he chips over the top, then he half volleys it, kicks it again, regathers and scores. You were there for that. You really are giving yourself – you're exposing your age a bit. Did I say I was there for that? Oh, I don't know. Had you had you ended <laughs> listing the ones you were there for? <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't there for the Brett Mullins right, one, but it's one just, of my favourites to look back on. Yeah, we'll just be clear on that. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm just looking around at the pitches on the wall of if they can uh, bring back any grand final tries. Obviously, the Greg Inglis try uh, mm. in 2014 was pretty special. I was, I was actually I was lucky enough to be there for that one. That, um, that definitely for me is like one of the most memorable when whenever someone says like you know when you want to unlock a memory like that's the first that comes to mind but once again i don't know if it's underrated because it's like yeah so iconic probably not underrated but fuck a good moment great moment. um even just like I'm, I'm i'm looking at the panthers one nath cleary's from last year yeah can't be ignored a uh, number of really special ones but the one that always comes to mind for me would be the cliffy Lions try uh, i also absolutely love watching the old matty bowen highlights uh, there was a there was a few that him and JT combined for that I will never forget. Mm. There was one where they wore like a, a navy blue, all navy blue jersey one time. I think it was like a, a retro round thing for the Cowboys uh, where JT kicks it infield and Matty Bowen's there. Scored some crackers in the Indigenous All-Stars as well. Uh, so, yeah, hard to narrow it down to one specific try, uh, but I think that one would have to be right up there for me. The, the, the Cliffy Lions try, that's probably my – Favorite of all time, and then the next game, Mal Meninga scores that cracker mm. where Ricky Stewart goes through and finds him. So great question, I like that. What's great next, question. Kat? Well, that was also from JN, who um, you've you've answered his second question, which is about Walsh being the best fullback. So um, hang tight for that. But I just want to shout out JN for having Gus Gould as his display picture as well. Yeah, shout out to uh, actually Kat still asked that question. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. sure. So do you think Walsh is the best twenty-one-year-old fullback we've seen? I think I'd pick him over a twenty-one-year-old Billy. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think sometimes we forget just how quickly Billy Slater came into first grade. Uh, you have a look at the first, I reckon, three years of his career. I reckon he scored 50 tries in those three years. It was pretty incredible. I think he went like 26, 14, and 19 tries or something. Uh, obviously, didn't feature in a grand final or anything during that period. During that time as well, uh, he obviously plays State of Origin, uh, has the chip over the top, Billy the Kid try. So he achieved a lot at a young age, Billy Slater. The comps didn't come until a few years after, but he did achieve a lot at a young age. So has Reese Walsh, to be fair. He's been to two clubs. He's dominated Origin. He's been to a grand final. I'll tell you the guy that we sleep on, though, Kat, is Darren Lockyer. Um, mm-hmm. I think because he went on to be, you know, one of the great five eights we've ever seen, we forget just how good Lockie was at fullback. I think if you have a look at Lockie's first four seasons at the Bronx, I think he won two premierships, 97 and 98. By that point, he was the Kangaroos fullback. He was the Queensland Maroons fullback. He was goal kicker for Broncos, Queensland uh, and the Kangaroos. He'd done it all, Darren Lockyer, at a very, very young age. And I think that we – I think we really do forget just how good Lockie was as a fullback because because he was so dominant at 5'8 mm. in the modern era. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Lockie, very hard to go past for me. Carmichael Hunt right up there as well. They've had some very talented uh, f- fullbacks there at the Bronx. But I think Darren Lockyer would still be my pick. And I probably slightly lean towards Billy Slater over Reese Walsh. But it's tight. I'm not confident in saying that, to be honest with you. And that's the beauty of it. You don't have to give an answer. It's um, it's, we, we let's just appreciate them all. Amazing players. That was so lame. That, that was pretty that. lame. Yeah, it was but we play so on. Lame. Play on. Play <laughs> on. Actually, that's a send off. Uh, Josh Dub Wallace. Hey, Katmandu and Guru. Hope you both had Ripper weekends. Thank you, Josh. That's really nice. Did you have a good weekend, Guru? Uh, I did have a good weekend. Um, a lot of footy, and then we went up to Redcliffs. That was good. You had a wedding, or was that last weekend? That was last weekend. This you weekend, had a party on Saturday. I had a, I had a birthday. I wouldn't say it was a party. It was very <laughs> tame. And then she uh, had a lolly bag and everything. It was and, great. I did. <laughs> and then I you, – have you heard of rotting? Yeah, you know, when you say uh, I'm going to have a day and just let myself rot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I rotted on Sunday. That's what Sundays are made for. Yeah. I like God that. called it a day of rest. I call it a day of rot. <laughs> rotting. <laughs> so Josh Dub Wallace, out of KP, Heinz, Cleary, drink bloke, who is the one you get rid of first and why? Also, let's hope we have prayed enough to the super coach gods to give Curran dual position. I really hope the super coach gods help us out there because I need it desperately on a few fronts. Um, out of KP, Heinz, Cleary, drink bloke, who's the one you're going to get rid of first? I don't have Scotty drink bloke. Um 
Oh, he's tough. I real. I don't think the Cowboys are too far away from putting it all together. Mm. Uh, and when they do, he's going to fucking explode. I'm probably looking at KP or Hines. Uh, there is a bit of news around today that Jack Cogger could potentially come in to replace Jackson Hastings. Sounds like that will play out. So that really piques my interest as far as KP this weekend. Hines is probably the one that I worry about the most. Um, I believe they've got a buy coming up soon as well. So Hines is the one I'm considering. Uh, but that's a decision I have to make in the next 48 hours. So I'll talk more about that on beers and break evens because I want to get Timmy's perspective on that as well. Turbo is the other one you can throw in there, but I would not be selling Turbo just yet. Um, the, the appealing thing about Heinz, Cat is that he's just so expensive mm. that you could just free up so much fucking cash there to spend <laughs> elsewhere. And if you're like me, you just don't play him anyway. Just don't play it, yeah. How's that one? Cat had a little hard word with Nico Hines, told him he wasn't up to scratch and benched him. Not 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 like benched him as in didn't reserve him. No. Ha- had him sitting out there with uh, some of the likes of Xavier Savage. Yeah, he meant um, zero, zero to me over the weekend. Heavy. Um, I know. And look, it's, it's a rough world out there, like <laughs> – it's, life comes at you quick, Nico. Life comes at you quick and, you know, he did say to me, he pleaded with me, please let me play, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? I she just spat on him. I just don't think this is your week, <laughs> it's Nico. Brutal. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Still beat the boys. So let's move on. Fuck. Jack Keys has asked, I'm confident Cleary will be able to up his points in the coming weeks, especially after their somewhat tough draw to start the season. However, I'm not sure how I feel about Nico. Here we go. They've started with a fairly easy two games. Do we think Nico just isn't destined to score as many points this year with Trindle in the sixth jersey? Trying to figure out whether to cut my losses early in the season or am I jumping the gun? So obviously this is somewhat of a repeat on the last question. Yeah. But, and uh, any thoughts? Yeah, look, oh, I said this in the preseason that I was worried about Nico Hines from this perspective. Um, I do think it will come together eventually, but I do think that Nico Hines does regress a little bit. Mm. Now, if he regresses by five points, which, which is a lot, he could still average 90. And I'm sure Nico is still going to have these enormous games, yeah? yeah? Like I'm not telling you he's never going to score well, but I just think you will see more lower scoring games because you're watching Braden Schindler. He's playing both sides of the ruck. Matty Moreland used to play down a corridor and never leave it. Mm. And you can see how strong that edge is still. And a lot of that's Braden Trindle. So <laughs> I... I still think Nico is a super coach gun. I think at the back end of the season he will be a must-have. But I do think that he regresses quite a bit. And I said this from the start and I think the evidence, I think it's staring us back in the face. Now on the weekend he didn't do a heap and he still scored 75, which is good. Mm. And he's still going to be a very solid super coach player. But I just, I think we will see more of his flaws than we have previously before and I think we'll see a little bit less of his ceilings as well. Interesting. Okay. Thank you for your question, Jack. Okay. Now, Josh Dub Wallace is back. I also think Hosking is a real chance to keep Whitehead on the line. What are your thoughts? I think he is too. I think he's a real sniff too. But Elliot Whitehead is a leader down there at the Canberra Raiders. Um, look, I could talk out of my ass to you guys about this. Let's wait until Timmy Williams is with us on Beers and Break Evans. He'll, I think he will have awesome. a definitive idea of what this looks like. Yeah. I think some of these super coach questions will definitely be revisited yeah. as well tomorrow. Rucker has asked, how was the weekend for both of you and how good KO Stadium with all the boys, Rue? Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, we spoke about that today in the catch up. Uh, so you can, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it for about 10 or 15 minutes there, but it was unreal. KO put, KO put on a great event um, and that stadium was unbelievable. The feast they put on for us was all time. Uh, loved every minute of it. Met a lot of people from the Rue crew up there. When I say a lot, there was two or three people from the Rue crew that were actually at the event with us, which was unreal. Got to have a beer with a few of them. Uh, so yeah, absolutely loved it. I love that he called you Cat in a Hat too. I appreciate it that yeah that's really cute i like that it's um it's a refreshing change from Kathmandu. not that there's any issue with that but i think we need a bit more variety again. we do need variety. Yeah yeah, yeah 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 there's there's some great options out there so plenty yeah, yeah. luke chalmers who would you bring in for trindle and also pineapple on pizza question mark now me and kat have already had one fight today <laughs> at the cafe uh, i ordered a wrap and i i get where cat's coming from Interesting. But I stand by it. Can, actually, do you want to run us through this one? Okay, yeah. First, look, I'll just say it straight out. I'm not a believer in pineapple on pizza. Um, I know that Rue loves pineapple on a burger. It's it, Would we say it's a non-negotiable for you in, in terms of a burger stack? 
If there is something I can get away with having pineapple on, I will always have it on there. I cannot okay. believe yep. the amount of people that don't. It's so wild. for me, it's pineapple is more of a dessert thing. So like I'd finish the meal with a bit of pineapple, but I definitely wouldn't include it. Um, in fact, the thought of the pineapple texture with everything else is quite off-putting. And also you put pineapple on a wrap and I feel <laughs> like you were really challenging the integrity of of the wrap itself. How hard was that wrap at any point you could have had pineapple leakage? I'm not a fan of that. I did have a bit of pineapple leakage from did my wrap, you? but I refused to mention it because I knew how it would finish. <laughs> we were eating across from each other and <laughs> yes. he was like, she, I hope she doesn't see and the I pineapple. And I strategically placed my laptop so she couldn't see my leaking wrap. Um, I still so. stand by it though and I will do it again next time I have a wrap, which will be very soon from that joint because they're unreal. Mm. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I think pineapple is unreal. Kat, I ordered the wrap and Kat goes, why don't you get your pineapple for dessert? And I was like, what? Just get it on the side and you eat it after. You know how you like you want something sweet after your meal? Pineapple's perfect. Also, pineapple can make your mouth a bit furry and like it can <laughs> – don't look at me like that. You know how pineapple – it has enzymes. I don't want to get too scientific on you because this is a rugby league guru, not the pineapple guru, but – Pineapple has a certain enzyme in it which um, actually like eats away at your mouth or whatever. Like once again, I'm getting really technical here. But it can really affect your actual taste buds and how food tastes but also the texture of food. Tell me you've had that experience where pineapple has made your throat itchy. Kat, I don't have the (laughs) slightest fucking idea what you're talking about. Okay, we're going to leave it here but in the comments. And who does enzyme play for? (laughs) <laughs> Raiders, what I want you to do in the comments is please back me up here if pineapple has ever made your throat itchy. Moving on. Uh, okay, Ados, wait, you've answered that question. That is all good. Jeff, definitely check out Ados the Great. His content's amazing. Dons has asked, thoughts on Hutchinson to Savage? Yeah, Hacho's a really interesting one. Um, he scored 30 so far, which, I mean, he's not going to lose money, but he's not making you money. Um, I've already got Savage, so I'm pretty happy with that. I, I do think with Hacho, he plays the Titans this week. I reckon he's a sniff to put on a little score there. Mm. Uh, but I think as a whole, Hacho has been a letdown. So I understand making the move to Savage. Um, if he is if he's the cheapie with the lowest break even um, that you don't have, then – yeah, I understand the trade. I think you've got other priorities in your side that you could deal with. Um, and I also think the the value of Hacho is that if you move a halfback, it means you can – if you sell a halfback, it means you can move Hacho there for just a little bit of time until you actually find the halfback that you want. It's not ideal, but if it frees up cash to make money somewhere else, I don't hate that approach either. Uh, but if you're happy to just stick with your halfbacks and, you know, yes, they're going to lose money over the next few weeks – but if you never sell them, you don't actually lose money. You'll just make it back when they start scoring well. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I can see, I can see what you're trying to do there, Don's, and I don't hate it. All right, Bucko has asked. This is probably the same old story, but do you think the Chooks can win the comp with Kiri at six, Walker at seven, and Smith at nine? As a Roosters fan, I still feel like it's the long kicking game which we lack when the big games come versus the likes of Cleary, Moses, DCA, etc. Yeah, it's a really good point, Bucko. I'll tell you what, I reckon the Roosters are in for an interesting few weeks. Now, I'm not sure how long Luke Keery's out for. He's obviously had a lot of HIAs in the past, but I think there is a genuine world where Sandon Smith could be a better option for the Roosters in the halves than Luke Keery. Uh, he's obviously a lot less in, he, he, a lot less inexperienced and whatnot, uh, but I really like Sandon Smith. I think he's criminally underrated. I think he adds a different dimension to that Roosters side, and I would not be surprised to see the Chooks go on a real run over the next few weeks you got to remember that's what happened last year. As soon as he came into that footy side, he won a lot of big games for them. Um, and I personally think he is a ball player, not a hooker. So he gets an opportunity to play in his proper position over the next few weeks. Um, one to keep an eye on. I'm That's my biggest worry with the Roosters about them winning a comp is their spine. There's no doubt about that. Teddy, not an issue. Well, there are issues, but not a big enough issue to not win a comp. It is it is the long kicking game of those guys that worries me. Um, I reckon Sandon Smith, he could. He's, he's just got that the running game that Kiri doesn't quite have at the moment. And after a, a, another head knock, it, it, it could rattle mm. Kiri even more. So 
That's a, next few weeks, very interesting for them because the beauty of this is now, Kat, mm. you get to bring Sandon Smith inside to play his proposition and it opens up the 14 jersey. So Connor Watson finally gets an opportunity and he has been absolutely braining it in reserve grade. Mm. So it adds another dimension to the Chooks here. And all those people that put Connor Watson in as their uh, hooker will be happy that he's finally getting some minutes. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about that. That'll be, yeah. But I, there, he was his selection percentage was considerably high considering he wasn't. 100% in that side. Anyway. Yeah. Moving on to Horny Harry. Great name, Harry. Uh, thank you for that. We trading Ponga or what? I've currently got Ponga and Puppy thinking of going Ponga to Turbo. I know Turbo's break even is 102, but he actually looks good unlike Ponga. I think uh, Horny Harry is uh, <laughs> Tim Williams' burner account. But anyway, uh, we traded Ponga or what? I've currently got Ponga and Puppy. Think of going Ponga to Turbo. Um, yeah, I don't mind going to Turbo, mate. His break even's 102. <laughs> sure. Um, that doesn't really worry me all that much. If you think Turbo is the better option, go for him. Um, it, it sucks you've already got Puppy. That makes it difficult. He's probably the guy I would go to. Mate, honestly, the more I think about Jack Cogger coming into this side, the more I just wonder if we just wait a week on um, Ponga. I know they look a little bit out of sorts, but now the coach has made changes. Everyone knows they're not safe. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a bounce back from KP. And I know I said that last week as well. Don't get me wrong. And there's every chance I say it next week. But I don't know. I just, I've just got a feeling about holding KP. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, but that's just my gut feel. Yeah, and sometimes well, this early on in the season, you got to trust your gut. You don't yeah. have enough stats to back it, back it up, other than just do what feels right. Okay, Rohan or Rowan? <laughs> Rohan. I do that every week. <laughs> Ro- Shout out Rohan. to you, Rohan. You're doing good gear. <laughs> oh, I hope it is pronounced like that. You know, let us know uh, in the comments. Thoughts on Luki to Finifuiaki if named to start. Then I could either go Arrow to someone around 550K and Levi to Joey Lussick or Arrow to Liam Henry and play him or Hughes as my second FRF and go Jacob Gagai to Oh, my Ronaldo. God, Rohan. <laughs> oh, Fucking my hell. goodness. You got me in a pretzel, brother. Jesus. <laughs> All right, let's slow down. All Thoughts right. on Luki to Finifuiaki. Shout out to uh, Rohan um, getting you in a tongue twister and Finifuiaki didn't, by the way. Unreal. Um <laughs> Luki to Fine Filiaki, yes. Then I could either go Arrow to someone around 550k and Levi to Joey Lussick or Arrow to Liam Henry and play him or Hughes my second front row forward and go Jacob Gagai or to Ronaldo. He didn't take a breath once. He did not take a breath, no. Hates a comma. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't mind those, mate. Liam Henry, I'd probably wait a week if you can. Just remember with, um, with Jai Arrow... He's not playing, so he's not actually losing you money. So you you can even wait another week and see what the best option is. It, I assume you've already got Terrell May if that hasn't been mentioned. If you don't have Terrell May, I would grab him for sure. <laughs> Levi to Joey Lussick, sure. A little bit of a luxury though, I think. I think that Levi, despite how fucking average he's been, he scored tries, so he's going to make money. I'm just – I'm not sure if it's worth the trade to mm-hmm. go straight to Lussick. Um I've got to make that decision myself and, once again, keen to talk to Timmy about it. But that's not a move that I'll be making. You've already got Lussick. Good as gold. Congratulations to you. That's great. Uh, Lussick's going to – his scores have been better, but he is 100K more expensive. So it'll be interesting to see where they actually land. I would assume Lussick makes a little bit more money. But if you've got Danny Levi, I, I would probably just hold him. I don't think it's worth using an extra trade to get a little bit of extra money at hooker to then try and get to Harry Grant. I think with the way Harry Grant's scoring that he's 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 dropping cash at the moment, I think that Levi will be enough to get to him, but that's just my take on it. Who's your hooker guy? I have Levi and Appy Carousel. You got the same as me, okay. Sweet. You got right. the same as me actually anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Hayden Woodbridge wants to know, Guru, why wasn't SJ kicking goals? Because he didn't get the kicking tee. Is what I gathered. I have no idea why, though. Uh, I would you should say know why. SJ is an absolute fiend for a groin injury. Um, I would say that might be flaring up a little bit. Uh, hard to really get a read on why that would be. I would say he's probably carrying an injury at his age, uh, with the way that SJ has moved all of his career. I think he's. I think he's been carrying an injury for a long time. Uh, so yeah, it w- I think it'll be a week to week proposition whether. 
SJ kicks or not. Unless Lukey Metcalf has just won it off him straight out. If so, we haven't really heard too much about it. But I'll try and get an answer for you guys on that because it is important. SJ is just sort of out of mind, out of sight for me as far as super coach and everything. But I'll talk to uh, the great Vintage Jackson mm. and see if I can get a, a little line for you guys. What's next? Sidestepping not good for the groin over time. No. Okay. Tyson Jones. Hey, Kat and Guru. This question is for both of you. What is your favourite soft drink? Thanks, thanks, legends. Keep up the good work. Take us away, Catman. Do What do you got? I'm going to be boring, but I love Coke Zero. I just yeah. love it. I crave it. I can have multiple in a day. I try not to, but, yeah, I love it. I've never seen you have a Coke Zero before. Well, I don't really have that much soft drink though, do I? Yeah, you don't. That's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like Coke Zero. I like normal Coke. Um, I, I actually don't mind the occasional Pepsi. Yeah, Pepsi Max for Pepsi me. Pepsi Max is good. Yeah, Pepsi Max with ice. Yeah, it's good gear. Um, but I'm a big, like, when I'm out on the, on the drink or whatever, I'll normally have – Four to five beers, normally blokes if available, uh, and then I'll make the move to uh, bourbon and Coke. So that's when I consume. Isn't it weird? Like I can sit at a pub and have like six or seven bourbon and Cokes, but the idea of having like if I'm sitting here having seven <laughs> glasses of Coke is the most outrageous thing ever. <laughs> but you so give true. me a nip of bourbon and I'm like, yeah, no, that's sweet. Play yeah. on. Sometimes um, I, I know I, I think how much liquid people can consume in a night and it's like if this was water, like you'd be full. <laughs> yeah. Where's yeah, it all true. going? Anyway, yeah. deep questions. We did uh, we did go to the pub on Friday and we uh, we indulged <gasps> with our first drink. Okay, so Rue goes, Kat, what do you want? And I said, let's have an Aperol spritz. I'm, I'm, I'm known to have an Aperol spritz. I do enjoy one in the uh, here and there. And um, I said, what are you going to have? And he goes... I'll join you on the Aperol Spritz. Hey, I um, I think it's my favourite thing about weddings is always Aperol Spritzes getting around yes. and get stuck in. Um, I think that was our first ever drink together. Yeah, I think so. Because, yeah. I mean, we haven't we're, – we're yet to kind of sit on the couch and have a bloke. Um, I actually haven't tried a bloke yet. But I'm not a huge beer drinker, so it's not it's nothing personal. We might have to uh, get that as Roo Crew content. Your I first, think so. My your first, first bloke. bloke. Love that. Cat's um, first bloke. Yeah, there's something in that. <laughs> it's um, a bit alarming actually. And, yeah, so uh, we had a little Aperol. We did. And then Timmy Williams arrived and bullied the shit out of me. And you know what? I'm all for it. I, I am all for having a sneaky cocktail here or there. I'm a fiend of an espresso martini. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think that's a real man will Can take on both. the Aperol spritz and he'll look everyone else in the eye and go, fuck <laughs> you, I'm here for this. Every sip he's just making eye contact with everyone in the room. Yeah, Timmy Williams of Kuma fame was not impressed. Yeah. Anywho. Anyway, I say here's to more Aperol spritzes. Yeah, play on. Max Doherty has asked, hey, Kat and Ruru. Ruru, that's nice. <laughs> that's very affectionate. Head-to-head -head covering all aspects of footy and comedy, Fletch or Hindy? I absolutely love Hindy, but Fletch is just so funny. the OG undefeated. Fletch, uh, Fletch is sort of down from the same sort of general area as um, some of my family grew up de mm. down in Bondi playing for like Pato Colts, the Nuts and Bolts and uh, Bondi mm. United and whatnot. And uh, I, I've heard from a number of people that when Fletch was younger, he was sort of in a little trio of three blokes and apparently out of the three of them, Fletch was the, the least funniest out of the three of them. So they must have been Whoa. one hell of a party because I think Fletch is fucking hilarious. I was lucky enough uh, when in Las Vegas – uh, to get an elevator with Fletch for a couple of minutes and uh, it was him and Matty Johns. They were both off their heads and it was like watching two comedians on stage. They just Yeah, that's amazing. It. I it feel like great. what you witness in that lift, it's like people would die to experience that. I would have died to experience it. It was unreal. Yeah, you were just standing in the corner like. Just standing in a lift, me, Tom, Eddie, Matty Johns and Fletch. It was great. I was, I, I was hoping for like a, one of those movie scenes where the lift just stops and we're stuck in there for a few <laughs> days. It would have been great. It would have been unreal. Yeah, never wanted a technical error on a lift more than that. <laughs> anyway, Connor Moran has asked, what is your favourite NRL song that a team runs out to? As a Manly fan, <sighs> mine is the 1992 Daddy Cool Eagle Rock remix to be very specific. Also love Puff Daddy, Come With Me, which is normally played before the big games. What about you guys? What do you – Yeah, I think I know yours, surely. I mean, look, like South Sydney, there's only really one song that everyone associates it with. So for me it's that, but – Oh, I think my issue with um, A and Z or Allianz, no, what's the A, -Z. A call? Oh, A call, yeah. I'm waiting for some variety there. Um, the the music's terrible. 
Like they have not updated the, their playlist in like 10 years. So yeah. I'm kind of waiting for a bit of a refresh there. But what about you, Brew? Oh, I think uh, Eagle Rock's a very good shot. I'll tell you what, and I don't know the name is. You have to forgive me. But yeah. the song that the Raiders sing um, is a very, very good one. I, I was actually, I um, yeah, can, can you look it up? I mean, funnily enough, me and Matty the Waterboy were talking about this the other day. He said that uh, 2019 he went down there for the prelim final. That was the game that Josh Papali'i scored the try to get them into the grand final. And uh, Matty said he was almost in tears and he went to Mooseheads <laughs> after and they started playing the song and Matty was like on the dance floor in his Rabbitohs jersey getting bullied and almost crying and he's like, it was so catchy. Even I started to dance along to it, which I Is thought this, was great. Are you referring to their the Canberra Raiders theme song? Yeah, yeah. Just can you play it's it there? Hands like houses. No idea. Play it if we can hear it. Yeah, this one. Is this it? Go to like in the middle somewhere. Okay. Yeah. See, this is one of the things though, like I – oh, I accidentally just showed the empty chair. There you guys. There you guys. Welcome. We're missing Timmy. Um, there, I've never seen the Canberra Raiders live and so I've never oh. – and I've obviously never, having not seen them live, I've never been to their stadium. So I don't think I'm in a position to actually say, which is my favourite, because I'm yet to really experience every home game, all yeah. those – all those different stadiums. It's a good trip down to the nation's capital. Uh, like you, you got to really rug up. Mm. Uh, but the, the the nightlife after is good fun. Uh, it's a cool stadium. So it's a weird stadium, sort of like out on its own. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get to. But no, it's a good stadium. Good vibe down there in Canberra. Go to Mooseheads after or one of the other many joints mm. down there. It's uh, it's good fun. We'll um, I'll, I'll definitely I, I normally get down there with, with my mate Steve for one game a year. Steve I think o. he actually went on the weekend to the Tigers game with his brothers and stuff. So I'll try and get down there again. Me and uh, me and Timmy and my mate Steve went down there last year for a game, so that was good fun. It's good having Timmy Williams down there now. He knows all the sights, Mr. And the scenes, and Mr. Canberra. Yeah, he knew his way around the nation's capital. So, uh, and there's other things down there, like like you can get up the next day and go to like the War Museum and stuff, which yeah. I, I think is fucking hectic. I love that yeah, sort of it, shit. It definitely uh, for me, and it's just Questacon. That's Quest all I think con, about yeah, yeah, is yeah. back like school days. That's the only reason people went to Canberra. The old year Parliament, six trip. Parliament House in and Questacon. I'll give you the hot tip for everyone that remembers their trip to Canberra in year six is a joy. I went there twice as a teacher and it was a fucking nightmare. <laughs> God, it sucked. <laughs> Telling kids to shut the fuck up at 4 a.m. and then you have to make them stand outside and it's it's like three degrees yourself. You just like sack this. This Goodness is awful. Goodness me. Fun yeah. fact, uh, my grade in year six, was, we misbehaved so much as a unit that um, our school didn't let us do the trip to Canberra. Ooh. Like it wasn't an overnight trip. They said you're going to have to do Canberra in one day. Oh, Barney Rock. Oh, God, that's an innings. Six. Imagine 12-year-olds, like 45 of them, in a, car, in a bus for six hours. Remind me to tell you after the show because this is definitely not for general viewing of uh, my year 11 trip to Canberra. Kat, I'll tell you later. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Rank. All right, go to the All next right, one. let's move on. I will say though that the Eagle Rock, it's very um, – it's iconic. Shout out to Up Up Cronulla too, another okay. good one. Yeah. Cool. All right. Alex says, hey, Guru and Kat, Raiders have won two more games by 13 plus this year than they did last. Think they are shot to make the eight. I'll tell you what, my answer to this is why not? Rugby league is a very simple game made complicated. The Raiders are completing their sets, they're kicking to corners and they're defending for each other. Why not? I mean, I, I tipped them to go really poorly this year, but from what I've seen so far this year, Honestly, why can't they replicate what they've done in the first two weeks? It's going to be harder against good opposition. But if you complete at 85% in the game of rugby league, you will beat, I reckon, 12 out of the 17 teams in this competition on a regular basis. Mm. Um, I... I think the Raiders, now that I've watched them and stuff, I think they're every chance. You've got to remember as well, like what they've done in the first two weeks. And, you know, I, I don't really care about who they beat. It's how they played. Mm. Performance over results for me and they looked great. Um, you have got guys like Corey Horsburgh to come back in, Elliot Whitehead to come back in. Seb Chris has only played one game. I mean, Ethan Strange is playing his first game. The New South Wales Cup team is absolutely fucking carving it up at the moment. You think about the Warriors and how much depth they have in their squad. The Raiders New South Wales Cup 
beat their cup side by about 30 on the weekend. Wow. Um, Chevy Stewart will come in at some point. He'll do well. I mean, like, they're all just playing so well at the Raiders and their depth is unbelievable. Trey Mooney's not in the side yet. They got hookers falling out of their ass. Like, they're just in a good spot, the Raiders. So, you know, like, we, I mentioned a few times on the show, we went to that Ricky Stewart luncheon a few weeks ago. And just from talking to some of the Raiders people, how they're just like, it's hard for us to recruit. No one wants to come to Canberra. Our best chance is to get tough country pricks hmm. that just want to go at it every single week. And that's exactly what they've got. I think they're in a good spot, the Raiders. I, yeah. fuck, I, I didn't give them any hope of making the eight at the start of the season. But now I reckon they're every chance. They're going to be such a pain in the ass to play every week. It's not even funny. No, it's a great strategy. Like you find a way to, to make it, I guess, um, work with what you've got, which is the yep. fact that you can can give an opportunity to a lot of these country boys. Wayne91 is back and he's got a hell of a question. Guru slash Rook, do you like Wicked Wings from KFC? If so, ask them to put chicken salt on them. It's a game changer. You won't go back. Now, shout out to Wayne91. I believe he's made this suggestion on Beers and Break Evens before as well. I could be wrong, so they must be good. It's a real um, passion point for Wayne. It's a real passion <laughs> point. Yeah, I like that. Shout out to Wayne91. He's been a long-time guru, guys, so I appreciate you, brother. Um, <laughs> I I do like the occasional Wicked Wing. I find Cat KFC fucks me up. <laughs> If I'm being completely honest, it hits me for six. If Great. I if I'm gonna have KFC, I know what my next 14 hours looks like. <laughs> and if there's anything on or I have to be alert or I have to be on for absolutely anything or socialize with people, I'll probably let it go through to the keeper. <laughs> That's and especially for wicked wings. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean now. And I was not the most ladylike conversation <laughs> for you to have, but anyhow. I, it's okay. I, I, I could tell pretty early on where this was going. <laughs> um, so hold on, let me just compose myself. Um, now, similar to the soft drink thing, I'm not a huge uh, fast food eater either. And I don't know if I've actually had Wicked Wings in my life. Honestly. I've definitely had KFC. Yeah, you've had Wicked And I'll Wicked agree Wings, so. with you. In that, don't make me feel great. I'm not yeah. a, like a fried food person to that extent, but it does sound good. And we were talking earlier. We we had <laughs> yeah, a, we- a, a moment of synergy in the in the cafe down the road where we were both eyeballing the the chips that were fresh <laughs> out the fryer, and we looked at each other and said, "Those chips look good." And we were we said it at the exact same time. But it's because of the chicken salt. So yeah. I think we can both agree that chicken salt on anything of that nature is definitely a win. I think chicken salt on everything should be assumed, like everything that has salt chips for example chicken salt should be assumed and if you don't want it you're the freak and you need to point it out (laughs) you need to be the one to call yourself out and say i don't want chicken salt and then everyone who stares at you for saying that like it it, you deserve it. Yeah. No, no, completely fair. Uh, now, I've just eyeballed the next question, which is from Jared Norris. Jared, <laughs> Jared you've written Morris. me a fucking essay and I can see about four question marks in there. So <laughs> brace yourself. You're getting short and sharp answers. Do you want to read that to yeah. us, Kat, or do you want me and to read it? I, I'm happy to read it, but I just want to call out Jared for doing the same thing last time. He did Jared, the same thing last week. We're coming for you, mate. Jared Watch loves a que- uh, multiple questions in a in a paragraph. Um, I also love this picture is Russell Coit, who I actually saw the other day. IRL. You saw Russell Coit? I saw Russell Coit. He was on a walk oh. and I was on a walk with my cousin and my cousin goes, oh, my God, that's the guy from Kath and Kim. And I'm like, you mean Russell Coit? The Coy? guy from Kath and Kim, I know. Kim. Yeah, she's lived all in, Aussie adventures, thanks. Yeah, she's lived in the States for a while so she's a bit uh, yeah, right. out of it. Anyway, and I was like, that's, that's Russell Coit and that is amazing that we've just Have you ever gone him. back and watched all Aussie adventures? I haven't, but I should. Like there's <laughs> – there's a definite appreciation. Here. Yeah, no, it was a great show. I actually went back and watched it the other day and I don't remember it being as over the top and stupid as it was, but mm-hmm. I still loved it. It was great. I'd I love, love to get – if I could – if anyone out there, I would love to get All Aussie Adventures something for the studio. Mm-hmm. Honestly, ideally a cardboard cutout of Russell Coit. Oh, that's all that's missing here. I would much rather that than Freddie or Cleary that we've got yeah. currently. Or I reckon add Russell to the to the mix. Yes. Okay. True. Yeah. Now, sorry, Jared, we've just we've gone off on a tangent and we told you off for, for the length of your question. Anyway, Jared Norris, are you related to Chuck? Anyway, hey Rue, tearing tearing. Tearing I knew that'd happen to you. 
<laughs> I saw that coming. That was great. <laughs> Tearing my hair out over Heinz, Cleary, Ponga, Drinky Combo's performance. Hearing a lot about selling guns before they drop in value to upgrade elsewhere. How quickly can they bounce back to their starting price if you stick through the drop? No, you're more of a pick and stick man, but wondering if the strategy changes at all for head to head. I'm getting torn to pieces by guys who haven't even played a full 17 and have terrible cheapies, but Captain Walsh or Isako. Should I save trades to fix other issues, even though Luke Brooks is carrying my spine? Mate, I wouldn't panic just yet. I think we spoke about this in the Supercoach preseason, like we spoke about it two weeks ago. The scores are always lower in the first few weeks, especially for your superstars. You knew this coming in. You know it now. They will, like, literally go and have a look at any of those players and their first four weeks of every NRL season for the last few years has been lower than their season average. It is just the way it goes. Teams are defending well at this point. Teams haven't had the shit beaten out of them and their soul dragged out of them just yet. It will start to change over the next few weeks. Um I wouldn't panic just yet. And you know what? The people who have got, you know, that are captaining your fucking Isarcos and your Reese Walsh, these sort of guys, it'll catch up on them. Trust me. It will catch up on them. You don't do rogue shit like that and it doesn't catch up on you in Supercoach. Just be patient. I, If you want to sell one of those guys, I'm completely all for that. But don't go selling two or three of them. Don't go selling the farm for cheapies because you're going to run out of trades by the end of the year. You're lucky enough to have these guys. They might lose money and people will give you shit about it. But the reality is if you don't sell them, you don't actually lose money on it. They will make it back eventually and then you'll be sweet. Yeah. Cool. All right. Ethan McCready, I think he's asking a question that a lot of people would want to know the answers to, Rue. He says, hey, Guru and Rook, I think (laughs) one of the most important questions is what team did Rue put down for Mad Bunday with Grilled? Um, Mad Bunday with Grilled. Who did I put down? Um, I actually can't remember who. I I, I think I get the two for one anyway, Kat, mm. as part but of my But wasn't deal. your response to to me that because you <laughs> it's the love of rugby league, you never actually lose? Rugby league was the winner. I'm a fan of the game. Rugby league wins, I win. Yeah. Uh, my missus is a South Sydney fan. She wasn't stoked on the weekend, <laughs> let's be honest here. Nope. So is my producer, also mm-hmm. not stoked on the weekend. No. Uh, neither was Hammy, neither was Maddie. Uh, Timmy Williams, though, absolutely murdered a grilled burger <laughs> yesterday, maybe two. There you go. Well, I guess we'll have to see when you actually eat grilled and that should give us an indication of when That'll you're actually you winning. Hit. Yeah. Because yeah. if you didn't eat one yesterday... People's suspicions might be true. Yes, potentially. Mm, interesting. Isaac Cooper, hey, Guru and Rook, just wanted your thoughts on these trades for this week. I held strong and didn't make any trades last week and to get nice. some good cash generation, I've decided to boost this week. At the moment, I've got Lukey to Curran, Hutchison to Galvin by shifting Strange to wing fullback and Kinney to Pap. Anything you do different or do they seem solid to you? Fucking wild. You've got Keeney. That's bold. Um Mate, I am sweet with all of those. I'm considering doing the same thing with Hutcho, going a little bit early on Galvin. I think he's pretty safe in that side. Um, and, and moving uh, Strange down to um, wing fullback. I wonder if that means he's playing fantasy, not super coach. I think they're the – is wing fullback a thing in fantasy car? Yes. Yeah, okay, right. Um, yeah, hard for me to touch on fantasy, to be honest with you, mate. But I I, I don't mind Luki to current. But if, uh, as I said before, if Finney Fuyaki wins that role, I'd be going him for sure. What's next? Oh, another Isaac, different spelling. <clears throat> Isaac Love to see it. McEnroe. That's a cool spelling. He's got the I double Z A C. Yeah, don't don't take it to heart though. I S A A C. Oh yeah, this is we're not. It's not mutual. Yeah. It's mu- yeah. Just butchering. We're not me. Isaacist. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say I'm butchering the English language, but I don't know what you're doing over there. Okay. Proceed. G'day, legends. Chasing your thoughts on the space-time continuum and wormholes because what young Xavier did on the weekend was out of this world. It was out of this world. Very, very impressive, that meat pie. We saw it. We spoke about it in the uh, in the catch-up. Uh, it was fucking wild what he did. He's an absolute freak. I also just love this question. I'm a bit of a space geek and he was just speaking my language there. Uh, are you a bit of a space geek? I'm one of those people who You like conspiracies and stuff. I don't love you? conspiracies, but so do I, yeah. I'm I'm big into space and I find that I'm often just 
I, I just go on tangents in, in terms of like <laughs> researching things and like all of a sudden I need to know like how things work. Yeah. And that stuff, it's so complicated that it takes quite a lot of time investment in order to understand something. So You know who's a uh, – well, actually two people that are huge space and conspiracy nerds. Uh, one, Edward Simpson from <gasps> Hello Sport. Big space guy. Very keen to chat with him about and this. And Denon Kemp. Really? Yeah, the, the people's <gasps> beak, mate. He, that, that, that bloke was born in fucking tinfoil. It's unbelievable. Do you know he what just I'm, loves it. Do you know what I'm hearing? A yeah. show that's just the three just of us three of going you. into conspiracy theories. Oh, I'd love that. I would break the internet. Anyway, let's move on to Aiden Stratty. Speaking of great spellings of names, simple Aiden, A-D-E-N. I like know. That. Like just straight up. Can I buy a vowel? <laughs> Not for sale. What to do with these trades worth keeping your higher price players and taking a hit or worth swapping out and swapping back in for cheaper? Um, oh, mate, it all depends on your team. I'm okay with you swapping out one higher price player. I would say trade out a higher price player, not name Nathan Cleary would be my first tip to you. Uh, but I, I'm okay with doing it, but just do it with one of them. Um, that'll free up enough cash to get you two or three cheapies. And just remember, you don't have to get every single cheapy yeah you don't have to get every single one of them you just need to hit enough boxes you also need to save enough trades for the back end of the season and if you spend them all on your cheapies early you know getting them all like ash catch them out there all of a sudden you get to the end of the season you got all this money but you don't have enough trades to spend it there's a balance you have to find and you don't have to get every single one of them to give you an example timmy's going to come in tomorrow he's going to beat his dick to taint or picky and be carrying on a treat um i i don't have him and i uh, but i know okay i've got xavier savage i've got got jack bostock i've got all these guys that i know are going to do well he doesn't have savage i do so that'll square up there you don't need to get every single one of these guys well said tom stewart without knowing what's going on behind the scenes at souths what do you put some of their errors and simple mistakes down to going off the good old eye test? t uh runs How Good Sport. Go and check it out. t is a big Roosters fan, so he'd be absolutely loving <laughs> watching the train wreck that is South Sydney right now. I like the way he worded the question, though. Like He's he, good. He, he, he sounded very professional. He, he is very professional, t go, go and check out How Good Sport. Make sure you go check it out on Instagram, podcast, everywhere. Um, yeah, and look, without knowing what's going on at South Sydney, I've got no idea, too. There's obviously a, not, a lot of noise around there uh, it's only been added to this week by Latrell's interview by mm. Josh Mansell's interview all this sort of stuff a lot going on there we're hearing that Ilias is going to be dropped you guys will know by Teamless Tuesday what's doing there I, I, it's hard to put my it's hard to have any idea what's going on I'm just mm. talking out of my ass to be completely honest with you as we all are but yeah something over the last 18 months has just gone astray there mm. for South Sydney I think yeah. I mean it's so wildcat like <laughs> Honestly, eight months ago, they were the best team in the competition. Yeah. They couldn't be stopped. Now it has just been completely flipped on its head. I will say this. The one way to shut up journalists, the one way to stop stories is to just start winning games of football. Yeah. They get a star back this week in Jack White and we all know – the positive relationship he has with Latrell, uh, if that can get the very best out of Latrell, this situation can turn around very, very quickly. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, obviously, you've got um, Dean Hawkins coming into the side at seven this week. That'll be very interesting. I'm not completely convinced that he is the answer. I'm not sure if you're going to get a stack more out of Hawkins than you are mm. out of Ilias, realistically. Uh, but sometimes change can just be good for a footy side just to freshen it all up. Yeah. Hawko's got his opportunity to show what he can do. So from one of the great South Sydney families as well, the Hawkins. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep keen to see how it goes. But, uh, mate, I'm, I'm the same as you, T. So I've got no idea what's going on there and it's really hard to put your finger on it, isn't it, Kat? Yeah, and I think as a fan too, it's extremely frustrating because I felt really positive going into this season and then um, unfortunately, you know, like the results clearly aren't there just yet and it's there's a long – we've got a long season ahead of us but it has been a less than desirable start to the season – not just on the field, but I think in general. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let's hope that they silence the haters and get their act together. This is probably my favourite question too that's about to come up. This one's from Winston Neville who, big fan of your stuff, Winston. He's asked us who our favourite Ninja Turtle is. I'm going to let you go first, Rue. Winston without a Y. Make sure you go follow his Canterbury content. It's been unreal the last few weeks. Puts up a carousel after every game, which I've been enjoying. Some random shit in yeah, there. Yeah, and the, uh, the hot dog. Hot, 
Whoa. The hot dog rating, which he does, he rates how many let's trots. How many let's trots for your hot dogs, yeah. Very yeah. good year, very good year. Uh, so make sure you go follow Winston on all of your platforms, obviously, part of the Rue crew and a very active member too. So shout out to your Winston. Uh, we had him in the studio here to do the Doggies Best 17 a couple of weeks ago. Um, favourite Ninja Turtle. I'll tell you what, I, I had a look at this pre-show this question I thought I was, Donatello came to mind straight away for me why I don't know but I've actually sat back and thought about it a little bit more mm. and a little bit of a rogue one and maybe it's going against the question but I think Splinter is right up there the rat that dresses himself every day and seemingly raises four teenage mutant ninja turtles and then whenever shit gets really hectic who's the one that saves their sorry ass? it's Splinter um, great name too. I mean, it's hard to argue with that. I do think he said favourite Ninja Turtle and not favourite Ninja Turtle character. So I do feel rules. like you had to pick from one of the four. But that's fine. Um, I rate your decision. I do think he was integral to the plot. <laughs> However, I will go with Raphael and that is because Raphael has always been my favourite from day one. I love the colour red. So for me as a kid... It was – there was no question at any point it was Raphael. Raphael's like the real straight shooter, isn't he? Yeah. Get shit done, you know. Like I can relate loser. with that. Yeah. Next. <sighs> anyway, I think you guys are reading between the lines. <laughs> Dons has asked, I'm torn between my last trade. So far I have Ponga to Teddy, Luki up to Hos- Hosking. Which one would you do out of these two? Summerton to Lusik, Hutcho to Savage. Now, Kat's too busy uh, thinking about the Ninja Turtles. Well, have I just butchered it? Answered that question. Uh, I would probably go with Lussick on that one, bro, but that's a lot to take in. <laughs> um, there was actually a really good question that we missed there, Kat. Can we go back to oh, Will? He said, My bad. Who are your smokies in for a shout in this year's New South Wales Origin side oh. under Madge, or do we suspect it'll be more of the same players? I think there will be a lot of changes, Me too. and I reckon. Mate, the more I watch him, I reckon uh, Terrell May is going to get in from the Roosters. Shout. I don't know if he's a Madge guy because mm. he's obviously got a got a bit of shit in him, but at the same time, he's got a bit of shit in him. If you know what I mean, yeah. so it wouldn't surprise if Madge goes in. I think Appy's a very good shout to be the nine or yep. the fourteen. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, if he keeps playing the way he is, and this will sound outrageous, but mate, Madge would love a guy like Zach Hosking. He that would be a smoky, definitely. I think to anyone who's like not keeping up with the game, I don't think that they would make the call on Hosking. But if this is the thing that excites me about Madge, he will pick who is who are the best performers yeah. in these roles. Yeah, it's not about relationships. It's not about loyalty. It's not about who's been picked time and time again. Granted, you know those things always do play somewhat of a role in the decision making, but. I like that with Madge it feels like a clean slate and we have so much talent to pick from and why shouldn't it be a Hosking if he's playing, if he is the best in his position? Yeah, I'll tell you what, a Hosking would be a very handy player to have in Jersey 17 because he can defend at centre and he can defend in the back row. He can, mm. he can play both at a reasonably high click. So mm. um, sort of what Isaiah Yeo was probably six or seven years ago, um, sort of what Kurt Capel's been for Queensland mm. for a while. Uh, and look, I, I think Hosking is a long shot, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But um, it's a smoky, that it's you've a answered smoky, the question. Yeah, one to keep an eye on. If he keeps up his form, he'll be in that conversation more than what people are anticipating. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I think Terrell May is a very good smoky. I Isaac Tungo is another one that I would love to see there. Uh, but I'll tell you what, from the Cronulla Sharks cart, Cam McInnes. Oh, um, you love him. Tougher than teeth. I reckon there is he's every chance to get in there. The Blues uh, and Madge selected a um, a squad of 30 in the preseason mm, and Cam and McInnes was in, was in there. I spoke about it a lot then that I think it was sending a statement and uh, or making a statement, I should say, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him get a bait in there. Yeah. I rate it very heavily. He's the kind of guy that you want on your side. He's just, yeah, yeah he's he's a machine. Shall we move on to Don's question now? Which yeah. We, we, have you answered Brandon's question? Brandon. Or do you and yeah. Tim have a punishment? Yeah, yeah, we've moved. Yeah, okay, that we've one. moved past that. Yeah, so so for, for Don's, I'm torn between my last trade. Uh, so far I have Ponga to Teddy, Lukey up to Hosking, Shaw. Uh, which one would you go to these two? Summerton to Lussick or Hacho to Savage? I think if you have Summerton, I would probably go to Lussick. I think there's more money to be made there than Hacho to Savage. Savage could give you 
a 20 on any given week and completely fuck your cash flow. I think that with with the scores that Lusick already has and he's got better each week and because he's playing hooker, he'll get through a heap of defensive work. He's, he's got great forwards to work with around the ruck. I reckon Lusick's probably the play there, brother. Okay. Dan with a plan. He has asked... Guru, can you please use your powers of influence to find what a player needs to earn a KB stat in Supercoach? Dean Mariner's try the other night was a perfect example, but it wasn't given. It never and it does my head in. KB. Now, when I read this the first time, I thought you meant to say LB for line break, and I'm not sure if that's what you mean or not. I think KB yeah. is like when you chip and you regather the kick. Uh, and, yes, that is something that has annoyed me for a – long, long time as well. And I don't know why they don't credit it. It's bizarre. They came out and made the announcement a few years ago that they were going to and they just never fucking seemed to. Can you find anything on that cap yeah, by I'm, any chance? I'm going to look up. Can you just type up KB in, in, in NRL Supercoach? I'm pretty sure that's what you mean when D Mariner chipped over the top and he regathered. I don't know if it's called kick back or kick. Kick and re excuse me, kick and regather break. Okay, right, kick and regather the break. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I, I don't know why, bro. They they never credit it. Um, and, you know, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is a bit shit when you've got that player and whatnot. I get the frustration. Uh, but, yeah, my influence is very minimal, mate. Believe me when I say that. <laughs> okay, you've answered this one. I think we have hit our last question, which yep. is from Sammy, our favourite Lebanese <laughs> <laughs> friend. When will Bulldogs fans get their first grilled burger? This weekend. I reckon the Bulldogs are going to beat the Gold Coast Titans this weekend in the Toby Sexton Cup. Mm. Um, I'm not – am I hyper-confident on it? No. I'm looking forward to seeing team lists for both of them this afternoon. Uh, but I reckon the Bulldogs are a good sniff. I think it's at Belmore Cat, so huge advantage. I think Canterbury have improved each week. I know they've only played two games, but even from the trials, they've just improved yeah. each week. And I reckon that they pull an upset in uh, – actually, fuck, knowing the Titans, they might be favourites actually. I reckon mm. the Bulldogs win this week. I reckon you get your grill burger. I reckon Winston Neville murders about fucking 14 hot dogs out there and enjoys a big Matty Burton game there. It just feels like a game that Canterbury could win. But the Titans, they might get a couple of troops back, maybe Kieran Foran and whatnot. They have two weeks to prepare coming off the bye. We saw how the Dolphins responded to their really shit performance with mm. an experienced coach in Wayne Bennett in, in their next game. Desi Hazel's got two weeks to work with his Titans side, so they'll be up for it. But I just think the Bulldogs, I think it'll be ugly. My God, it'll be ugly. But I think they find a way to win this week, and I think – you get yourself a grilled burger. Go to the rapid review from this week. Sign up using the link in that description uh, and you'll be ready to uh, s snack onto a feed on Monday, mate. A, a daily double. Love that. I'd love to see them win win a game. At Belmore I, too, it would be unreal. Yeah, I've got a real soft spot for the doggies. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. doing good things. Are we done? We're done. That's How it. good. Unreal. Uh, if you are in the Roo Crew, uh, thank you for joining us once again. Obviously, early access. You're getting this on Tuesday afternoon. If you're watching on YouTube... You're obviously getting this a few days later. So if you want to join the Roo Crew, hit the link in the description. Come check us out. Bye, guys. I swallowed a <laughs>